clue. And the way of peace they have not known. There, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness. Because in His forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at that present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has Go faith in Jesus. Make yourselves better people instead of trying to pass your fucking way of life on others. Make yourselves better people. Stop trying to fucking try and make everybody else angry. You think I'm angry? I only ever yell at you and the anti-masker bastards down the street. I see your stupid little mask. That you are not exempt. You are the reason why thousands of people are dying. You personally. And your God. <laughs> so that's why he's mad. He said he's mad because I don't even know what he said because it was incoherent and very angry. But as you see, Christians, we give everyone a voice. Hey, why are you mad, bro? Like, you know what I mean? But really what it comes down to is people are mad because he says that, this is what he said, he wants me to be a better person. Before... Before I met Jesus, I was a terrible person. Before I met Jesus, that dude would even run up on me and say anything out of line to me because he'd be looking at the stars or looking at the moon. So, I, so actually, I'm a very now. I'm, I've always been a terrible person, but now I'm a terrible person saved by God's grace. I've always had filthy righteousness, but now I have the righteousness of Christ. So God actually made us better people. Do you know each one of us here could be doing something else? We could be doing something wicked. We could be breaking into your home. We could be racist. We could be uh, pedophiles. We could be all, all types of things. But we're out here preaching the goodness of God. Matter of fact, we're teaching you how to be. We're raping children, is what you're just saying now. Well, you said. Hey, excuse me. Homie in the dress said. Homie in the dress. What's your name? Homie in the dress. What's your name? Homie in the dress. What's your name? Homie in the sarong. What's your name? I'm not telling you my name. Okay, I'm not telling you my name, President Michi. My name is Dore Love. Why are you so angry? You, I do. My name is Dore Love. I know the Bible says God so loved the world. So that's why we're here. God loves us so much that this is love in action. This is true love. True love is to tell you to repent and turn from your sins. True love is to tell you that if, if you don't get right with God, God's going to reject you. True love is to tell you that everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And true love is to say if you die in your repent, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. This is what God teaches that true love is. God even says that love rejoices in the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man will come to the Father except for by me. Jesus also says that those who don't accept it will be cast out to outer darkness where there be weeping, rolling, and gnashings of teeth. So although, homie in the uh, dress, kimura, whatever you call it, homie in the, homie in the sharong, Although he may not understand, the Bible says darkness can't comprehend the light. Hallelujah. The Bible says the wicked are like darkness, they know it not what they stumble. That's why when Jesus yeah. Christ... Yeah. That's, fuck what the Bible says. That's why when Jesus Christ was on the cross, he said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He doesn't even know why he's so angry. He doesn't even know why this, this um, feeling is bubbling up inside of him. What it comes down to is that people have hardened hearts. But, the, but God promises that he'll take away our, our hardened hearts and give us a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. You see, you don't have to be, um, you don't have to stay in your sin. There's a way out. What it comes down to is like people don't like when their deeds are exposed. The Bible says that the preaching of the gospel exposes evil deeds. The preaching of the gospel expo exposes darkness. 
So this particular gentleman is not even mad at me. He's not even mad at my brothers or my sisters. He's mad that Christ has exposed his darkness. Everywhere that the, that the gospel is preached, the light comes. Everywhere we go, the Bible says we are the light of the world. So what we're doing is we're bringing light. And what we're doing is we're sanctifying and we're, and we're, we're shining a flashlight or a mirror on people's lives. Amen. And people don't like that. Amen. But the thing is, we're not doing it. It's Christ that's doing it. The Bible says it's Christ that lives in us. It's Christ that, that, that lives in us. And if they hate Christ, they'll hate us also because uh, the servant is not greater than his master. The reason why we're out here is because just for the guy in the Kimura, he needs Christ too. Amen. He doesn't know. The Bible even says that, um, uh, Apostle Paul says that, I, um, we go out to save people They don't even know that they need saving They don't even know there's something wrong God bless you But that's why we come out and we, and we show you the dichotomy We show you what a good person truly is like A good person will accept Christ Because a good person will know that he's not good And he needs Christ He needs Christ's righteousness The first thing that uh, the dude in the Kimura said Is I want you guys to be better people well, I would, ask, I would like to ask him, how do we become better people without Christ? How do I become a better person without God? How do I become a better person without the Father, without the Son, and without the Holy Spirit? You see, you can't come and offer or offer a criticism without offering a solution. You see, you can't just say, you know, you're wrong about this, you're wrong about that, that's trash. But if you don't have an alternative, if you don't have a solution, then it's just a critical spirit. It's not encouraging. You're not trying to save the world. You're not trying to change people's hearts. What you're trying to do is be self-righteous. You're standing in the, in the place of God saying, this is what I believe and you should acquiesce or you should bow down to what I believe. But the Bible says that we should not bow down to any idols, any false ideologies. The only one who we bow down to is God. The Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You see, we have gotten smart. We have wised up. We know that we're going to bow now because we're going to have to bow regardless anyway. But we also know that when we accept Christ, Christ gives us his Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit corrects all these things in our life, corrects all these things in the world. Everything that, that plagues society is from sin. Everything, anger is from sin. Um, child molestation is from sin. Racism is from sin. Um, all these things, sexual immorality is from sin. Homosexuality is from sin. Transgenderism is from sin. Lesbianism, these are just all from sin. People screaming like a banshee at the this is just sin. And the thing is, the Bible says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life for all those who believe. Don't you want eternal life today? Amen. Do you want to be angry? Do you want to stick in your sin? Do you want to stick in your downtroddenness? Do you want to stay in your depression? Well, if you choose that, the Bible says you have the right to choose, but there's consequences to every choice that you make. So if you reject Christ, the consequence is hell. And that's just the cut and shorties of it. And if you accept Christ, the consequences are no consequences. You, you gain eternal life because God is that good. God wants everyone to be saved. The Bible says it's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance, that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. And how do you come to the knowledge of the truth? Well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and by hearing... Faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. More honest talking, if you actually read your Bible, so you'd be taking care of yourselves instead of worrying about what other people are doing. Actually, read your fucking Bible. What, what Bible? What Bible verse says, "Take care of myself"? I've read a lot of fucking Bibles. So, give, give, what, what translation tells me to take care of myself before I take care of others? Everyone. Actually, the Bible says, "Beatitudes, you dumb fuck." Yeah, blessed, blessed are the peacemakers, for they. One of the beatitudes are blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Another one is blessed those who, blessed are those who thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So you should, you should be a peacemaker, brother. You should be a peacemaker because peacemakers shall be called the sons of God. Um, well, the Bible doesn't say anything about um, look out after yourself. It says the Bible says esteem others higher than yourself. The Bible actually says uh, calls us to be selfless. The Bible actually calls us to be sacrificial. The Bible teaches us that love is this. No greater love this, is this than a, a man to lay down his life for a friend. So, true love is Christ Jesus. Jesus laid down his life for us. Jesus died on the sin, uh, died on the cross for us. And Jesus died, um, the Bible says he died for us yet while we were still sinners. 
So while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Um, we didn't have to do anything to get right. We can't get right. There is no getting right in man. Man, the Bible says there's nothing good in the flesh. The Bible says uh, if you're in the flesh, you can't please God. So the Bible says that we have to pray with the Spirit. We have to pray in the Spirit. The Bible says walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, how do you walk in the Spirit if you don't have the Spirit? And there's only one way to access the Spirit. There's only one way to gain the Spirit. And that's by believing in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Acts 2.38, Repent, every one of you, um, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Um, salvation is available today. Salvation is available right now. You know, sometimes in life we have to stand in line for things. We have to wait for things. Um, if you want to go see a, a concert, you have to. Sometimes you got to stand in line. Nowadays, you got to stand in line just to um, go to the supermarket. I'm here to tell you today that there's no there's no lines when it comes to Christ. Amen. You can accept Christ right now, right where you are. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. Salvation is found in no other name except for Christ because there hasn't been uh, there hasn't been given any other name under heaven by which we can be saved. Amen. The Bible says that uh, e this is eternal life, that they believe in thee, the true God who they have sent out. Uh, that they believe in thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom they have sent. Because you can't know the Father unless you know the Son, and you can't know the Son unless you know the Father, because the Father sent the Son, and the Son perfectly reflects Hallelujah. who the Father is. That's why they asked Jesus, Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus says, have I been with you this long, and you have not known me? Now you both see me, and you know me. Jesus perfectly reflects who God is. If you want people to be better people, well, they should reflect God. If you want people to be nicer people, then you need them to reflect God. God. You see, um, in, we are, as human beings, we're inconsistent. One day we can be happy, one day we can be sad, one day we can be mad, one day I'll like you, one day I'll forgive you, one day I won't, I won't forgive you. But the Bible says God is the same today, tomorrow, yesterday, and forever, meaning that we can trust God. We can trust that God is good. The Bible says God is good. We can trust that God is love, because God is love. We can trust that God is salvation, because He's a Savior. The Bible says God will never... Salvation from your sins. Salvation from your sins. No, you created your sin by choice. Sin is created by choice. Sin is created by choice. Sin is created by choice. Our choices. So just like this, if um, Adam and Eve were in the garden and God gave them a choice, God said, if you eat from this tree, ye shall surely die. But even though that it ate from the tree, God is so good that he provided a way for us to be saved. You see, we were condemned. We were condemned in our sins. We were condemned in our flesh. We all deserve hell. But God in his goodness, God in his mercy, God in his love uh, said no. And he brought Jesus into the world. The Bible says that the, the, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. That means God had a plan for sin before sin sin even entered the world. The Bible says that God had a plan for all of us and so some of us are, are witnesses of what to do and some of us are examples of what not to do. I'm here to tell you today, do not be an example of what not to do. What not to do is reject Christ, is to be hateful, is to be evil, is to be sexual immoral, immoral, is to be a liar, is to be um, a fornicator, and is to be an adulterer. All these things are incorrect. All these things will separate you from God. All these things will... Um, will will put enmity between you and God. But Jesus Christ removes enmity between you and God. The Bible says that um if you, uh, if you are a friend of the world, then you are an enemy with God. You do not want to be an enemy with God. The Bible says that it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And that's why he sent Christ into the world. And that's why Christ is our salvation. Christ is our savior. And you can call out to him today and be saved. The Bible says God's arm is not too short to save. Do you know that the Bible uh, the Bible teaches us that? The Bible teaches us that according to God's foreknowledge, He has chosen us. He has chosen us to go out into the world and bear much fruit. A lot of people just say, you know, I just want I want people to be good. I want people to be nice. I want people to be good people. What I'm here to tell you today, the best people, the greatest people are those who receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that when you receive the Holy Spirit, the old man has passed away and behold, all things become new. 
Jesus has an excellent report among the heathen. Jesus has an excellent report among believers. Jesus has an excellent report amongst the Chinese people. Jesus has an excellent report amongst the Arabs. Jesus has an excellent report among, amongst the Muslims. Jesus has an excellent report amongst the Mormons, amongst the Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses. Even if people don't understand the biblical Jesus, Jesus has a good report. Jesus is a good person. Jesus is a good man. Jesus uh, did nothing wrong. Jesus died for the sins of the world. He was a lamb. He was a lamb led to the slaughter and he didn't even um, defend himself. He could have called uh, thousands and thousands of angels down here to wreck shop. But he didn't do that because he was obedient, even obedient to the cross. The Bible said, therefore, God has given a name above all names that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we might as well confess now, my friends, because there's going to come a time. So we might as well confess now, my friends, because there's going to come a time when you stand before God and God is going to ask you, what did you do with my son? What did you do with Jesus? And you're rather going to hear a, a welcome, good and faithful servant, or you're going to hear a depart from me. I never knew thee, ye workers of iniquity. We're here to tell you today that God loves everybody, but you have to turn from your sins. You have to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior to be saved. You have to accept Christ to be saved. There is no other way to heaven. Every other place leads to somewhere else. There's only one way that leads up. The Bible says the Son of Man came down from heaven and is still in heaven. The Bible says unless you are born again, you will not receive the kingdom of heaven. And there's only one way to be born again. Accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you'll be born again. What does it mean to be born again? You have to be born of the Spirit. The Bible says that uh, in, in, in sin I was shaping and in iniquity did my mom shape me. But that's why when we come, everyone who's born of water must be born of the Spirit. Get born of the Spirit today, my friends. Turn your back on, on, on the lies of the world. There's so much uncertainty. There's so many things going on in the world. We have to be protected by the Holy Spirit. We have to be protected by God. The Bible says Jesus saves us from the wrath to come. Do you know that there is a wrath coming? Just like the wrath came in the Old Testament and uh, Noah was building the boat. God said, get, get ready for wrath. And wrath came and uh, uh, the whole world was flooded. So the Bible says that next time a third of the earth is going to be burned. You want to be saved from this wrath. You want to be saved from the judgment. You want to be saved from the things of uh, things, things to come. So that's what we say when are you saved? Are you saved from, from the future judgment that's going to be poured out on this world? Are you saved from the seven seals when the angels are going to open up the seven seals and there are going to be earthquakes and there's going to be pestilence and there's going to be starvation and there's going to be fire and there's going to be locusts that have uh, uh, stingers from scorpions and people are going to run to the hills and say please hills fall on me and they won't fall. People are going to uh, wish for death but they will be no death. There will only be rest in Christ Jesus. Everyone that's not found written in the Lamb book of life will be cast out to outer darkness where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And this is not what God wants for us. The Bible says that uh, hell was created for Satan and his angels. But because we rejected God and we became like Satan and his angels, God said, well you wicked people can go in there too. But it doesn't have to be so. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess in your, in your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you'll be saved from the wrath to come. There's a flood coming, my friends. There's a flood coming, my friends. Everything that you see in the news nowadays, everything that you see with them locking up pastors and fixing up churches and giving fines to people who just want to worship God is a precursor to the end. It's showing that the devil is, knows that his time is short, and so now he's wrapping up attacks before the devil would attack us uh, behind the scenes. Now he's openly attacking the church. The Bible says, in the last days, all these things will happen. There'll be a great falling away. There'll be a great persecution. There'll be wars and rumors of wars. There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. And then, and then, this is not ever, this is not even, this is just the beginning of, of tribulation before the end comes. My friends, you have to be saved. When Jesus comes back, he's coming back and the Bible says he's going to consume his enemies with the sword of his mouth. When the Bible says when Jesus comes back that his role will be dipped in the blood of all those who did not repent. This will not be the same Jesus who said that he...
Yes, of those who did not repent, absolutely. And you will be one of those people, sir, if you don't repent. You will be one of those uh, blood, you will be uh, a member of his bloodstained robe if you don't repent. That's why you have to be saved. When we say, are you saved? That's exactly what we're talking about. Are you saved from the fires of hell? Are you saved from the lake of fire? Are you saved from the fiery judgment of God? The wrath of God abides on, abides on all those who hasn't accept Jesus Christ. The Bible says condemnation is this, that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And those who are evil do not want to come into the light, least their deeds be exposed. I'm here to tell you today, my friends, it's a good thing that God exposed our evil deeds because that means you can you have a repentant heart. That means you've humbled yourself and you realize that I need God. I need God more than I need water. I need God more than I need air. I need God more than I need a wife. I need God more than I need a son. I need God more than I need a daughter. I need God more than I need some phony cause. I need God. The Bible says a humble and contrite heart God will not despise. You have to know that you're a sinner. You have to know that you're uh, you fall in short of glory of God. You have to know that God has set a standard and if you miss that standard and if you're unforgiven, you see God, uh, Jesus came and he set that standard. The Bible says love is the uh, completion of the law. The Bible says if you love, love is completion of the law, but the first thing that the Bible says is that you should love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. You have to love God first. Because God is the foundation. Without God, there is no love. Without God, there is no wrong or wrong, right or wrong. Without God, there is no morality. Without God, there is nothing. Everything consists. The Bible says even in the whole world, everything moves and breathes and hasn't been in God. Everything consists because of God. The Bible says God calls it the rain on the just and unjust. God is so good that he calls it the rain on his enemies. God is so good that he feeds his enemies. God is so good he feeds those who are going to reject him. God is so good that he gave you a daughter even though you don't deserve a daughter. He gives you love even though you don't deserve love. He gives you food even though you reject him. He gives you everything that he needs. He wakes you up in the morning even though you hate him. This is the God we serve. This is a good God. This is not a God that says, you know what, I'm, uh, uh, even though uh, I'm, I want to go uh, call the rain on my people but you guys get no water no the bible says that god is a good god and he said he wants us to be like him and that's why he said we have to turn the other cheek we have to love our neighbors and we have to pray for those who persecute us we even have to love our enemies because we know that god is the foundation and if i love god more than i love myself then i'll love my enemies if i love god more than i love myself then i'll pray for the lost if i love god more than i love myself then i'll preach the gospel every day if i love god then I love more than i love myself then i'll do for others before i do for myself this is an unselfish God. This is an unselfish religion. This is an unselfish God that we serve. You want to be a better person? Be more like Christ. You want the world to be a better place? Start preaching the gospel. Let people be more like Christ. If everyone was Christ-like, there would be no war. If everyone was Christ-like, there'd be no sin in the world. If everyone was Christ-like, there'd be no rapists. If everyone was Christ-like, there'd be no child molesters. If everyone was Christ-like, there'd be no need for Black Lives Matter. If everyone was Christ-like, there'd be no murderers. If everyone was Christ-like, this world would be a better place. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why he tells Amen. us to go out into the world, preach the gospel to every nation, Amen. baptize it in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins Amen. and they will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that's being preached. This is the God that, this, this is the only God that saves. No one else saves. Buddha doesn't save. Allah doesn't save. Joseph Smith doesn't save. Taoism doesn't save. None of these people save. Matter of fact, all these people are dead and gone. You can find their bones. You can go to their tombs. But the tomb of our God is empty because he is risen. The angel said, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? He is arisen. He is alive. And because Christ is alive, we can rise. Because Christ is alive, we are alive. Because Christ uh, defeated death, we can defeat death. Because Christ defeated sins, we can defeat sins. And hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to our God. Glory to the God of Abraham. Glory to the God of Isaac. Glory to the God of Jacob. We give you, you are the most high God. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. And we love you. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. What comes next? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mari ke jalan yang benar Tuhan berkati